Thank you, sir. Thank you, Francisco. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so we're going to make this as painless as possible. Please don't shoot the messenger. Right? Um, so uh, this group pretty much focused, uh, or is tasked to focus a little bit more on uh, the participating countries and and uh, you know how their perspective with respect to CMA two is, uh, both from you know as a contributor, as a user, uh, as part of the whole development process. Uh, so pretty much what we did is kind of set up a little bit of a framework document here, um, breaking things down uh, from one level to the next. Uh, if we start you know, off on the left-hand side column, what we're looking at essentially are the existing, uh, whether it be from a legislative, regulatory uh, project initiative standpoint, what's really... <coughs> What are these countries really responsible for contributing information towards, for contributing their data towards? What's, uh, what's kind of the go governing document or governing protocol that they're charged with? Uh, some countries may be charged with stuff at a regional level. Uh, some countries may be charged with stuff at a national level. Some may be charged with stuff at more of a project or sectoral level. So uh, obviously with so many participating countries and so many uh, projects and initiatives and uh, pieces of legislation and whatnot. We couldn't list everything off. So what we tried to do is just give a brief snapshot or summary of uh, kind of, you know, how the process, uh, or at least how countries should be thinking about the process. Uh, so to start off with, at the regional level, uh, we identified two of the bigger and more uh, pertinent uh, regional commitments that a lot of the Caribbean islands and Caribbean states have uh, either signed on to and in some cases ratified. Um, the first one is the SPOR protocol, uh, Special Protected Areas and Wildlife, and then the Convention on Biological Diversity. <coughs> um, within the SPOR protocol, there are certain expected or specific demands uh, that are placed upon you know, the enacting body or government or whatnot. Uh, some of the ones that we identified were, you know, uh, del the delimitation of marine protected areas is a critical measure that needs to be done. Uh, another one is the effectiveness of marine protected areas in terms of, you know, having some method or indicator uh, to determine whether or not they're really doing what they're supposed to do. And then, of course, uh, bringing some type of stakeholder information in the form of socioeconomic data um, getting an idea or a snapshot again of, of who is this really affecting or who should it affect. Uh, also uh, being able to qualify and quantify what is affected. Um, as far as uh, logistical and financial support uh, that the CMA2 can provide or maybe can be provided to the CMA2, through the CMA2, uh, through the SPOR protocol, um, one of the key things that was, evident, that was uh, raised, and I think it more or less would apply to most of these types of uh, regional uh, agreements would be uh, the need for evidence to support uh, whatever decision-making tool or questions are being answered. In this case with SPOR, it's the uh, evidence to support MPAs, the delimitation of MPAs, the usefulness of MPAs. Specifically for the SPOR protocol, uh, benthic habitat mapping was identified as a, a definite you know, need to have this information in order to make a decision. Um, also, um, uh, the need for uh, financial resources to uh, support data acquisition and data resources uh, is also key. Uh, gap assessment is something that uh, I think, and uh, I can stand corrected from any of anyone who was there today, uh, gap assessment is something that can also look uh, at being a product of CMA2 in terms of helping to identify where there are data gaps, where there are certain questions that remain unanswered, where efforts should be targeted, um, as well as, uh, you know, it uh, can show what, uh, what really is still left out there to be collected in order to really properly adhere to something like SPOR. Uh, in a similar vein, not to be too repetitive with respect to the Convention on Biological Diversity, um, one of the main uh, contributors of information can be OBIS. 
Um, they have uh, multiple databases of biological records. Uh, they have uh, remote sensing and uh, imagery capabilities that can contribute towards the objectives of the CBD and therefore uh, assist the overall robustness of uh, what CMA2 could be. Moving down to things at a national level, uh, we kind of identified some key uh, instruments um, in each country that more or less each country is going to be charged with uh, executing on a regular basis and therefore uh, what information and uh, how, how the CMA or CMA2 can, uh, can help or assist. So the first one was uh, for the UK overseas territories, uh, there's a UK marine policy statement that was made uh, that more or less addresses things like marine planning and the need for overall better management of resources. Um, specifically uh, looking at proper data management, more effective and efficient data management. Um, and what can be provided to assist in that need is financial and technical assistance. Once it's been properly identified, once it's, uh, you know, put into some kind of context, uh, I think that's when, you know, financial and technical help will come along. Uh, for Colombia, Colombia is responsible, uh, and I, I'm going to say this for many of the other countries as well. Uh, everyone, more or less, at some point has to develop some type of state of the environment or state of the marine environment report. Uh, in Colombia's case, their focus a lot is on vulnerable and priority areas and doing threat assessments. Uh, that type of information can be most valuable towards uh, a CMA2 initiative. Uh, a lot of that work is done through Invermore. And as a result, uh, they can provide and serve up a lot of assistance in the form of not just data and standards and protocols and policies, but also from an institutional knowledge standpoint, <coughs> um, you know, taking from their experience and their practices and kind of uh, lessons learned approach. Within Mexico, more specifically in the Yucatan, there's a situational awareness on oceanography that's performed. Um, this is done more or less through the NODC in Mexico. Um, and they compile and uh, hold a lot of oceanographic data. Uh, I'm going to say specifically physical and chemical oceanography. Yes? Yeah? No. <laughs> and biological. And biological. Thank you. Um, didn't jot down every single detail. Uh, so. Uh, again, a, a good source of information for the CMA2. Uh, within the Caribbean Netherlands, there's a five-year nature policy plan. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. There's a nature policy plan that uh, takes place every five years, or is renewed every five years. Um, that's done under the Ministry of Economic Affairs, and of course it's another potential source of data to contribute towards the CMA. Uh, Puerto Rico has a state of the climate report that's done every three years. Uh, they're looking not just at raw data, but also adaptive measures, risk reduction and threat assessment. All those can be very uh, valuable pieces of the puzzle that can be thrown into the CMA, and not only just as uh, information on the whole, but again, as guides as to what everybody else can be doing, I think. Um, they can also provide a lot of RS and GIS capabilities. Uh, provide some assistance as far as data sharing policies uh, and also decision support tools. Uh, within Trinidad and Tobago, uh, there's the State of Marine Environment Report. Uh, I can't safely say that it's annual. I can safely say it's at least one is done every five years. Um, a lot of the focus within that is on water quality assessment, uh, bathing beaches, uh, identification of vulnerable areas along the coast, um, most of that is done through the Institute of Marine Affairs, um, and a little later on this afternoon you'll hear a little bit more about what the potential services can, and uh, data and product-wise can be offered through the IMA in terms of RS and GIS capabilities. Um, within Cuba, there's the annual environmental outlook, um, where they focus a little bit more on hazard assessment and coastal management. Uh, all of that is kept within the st National Statistical <coughs> Information System, and it's going to be pretty much a series of data and maps that can be 
pumped out of there and uh, fed into the CMA2 system or, uh, again, be used as a reference point if necessary. So, like I said, we didn't go through every single country. Um, but what we did do is kind of have a general discussion afterwards where we identified uh, some kind of common key areas as far as issues and opportunities that we would see or we would like to see uh, as part of the CMA2 process. Um, so what we have issue-wise, um, these are debatable, but I'm not going to go in order too much, but uh, there's definitely a lack of uh, capacity uh, as far as uh, analytical tools, um, enhanced capabilities, uh, or enhanced uh, technologies. Uh, there's not that much uh, that's offered as, as uh, throughout a wide range of the uh, participating countries. There's definitely a decentralization of information and reports in that it's scattered all around. Uh, sometimes not, nobody knows exactly where everything is. Um, what we do have it, uh, uh, in terms of the use of data by consumers, uh, some of it is viewed as a good use, some of it is viewed as not so good or biased use. There's a risk in terms of uh, you know, the effort to put out any and all information. Uh, no one knows exactly what everybody is going to use it for, and it can potentially open the door to some problems. And last but not least, uh, the priority of expected data sets and information that the CMA should produce. Um, we can't necessarily do everything in one fell swoop, and how we go about identifying priority data sets may become a little bit of an issue given the fact that everybody has their own priorities. Cool. Uh, last thing is uh, the opportunities that the CMA2 initiative can hopefully mitigate, or not mitigate, sorry, but provide. Uh, so we have possible and future projection or modeling tools uh, that can be a capability of the CMA. A lot of people are asking for that. Um, in terms of uh, being able to provide information to either at the decision maker level or just below where you know you have your data but you want to be able to uh, design a model or do some kind of future prediction and, and be able to maybe yeah. answer a question that no one's asking currently but that may that they may ask at some point in time. Um, to have also a, within the CMA2 an available uh, frequently asked question section and possible simple visualization and query tools for the average user. Uh, doesn't have to have too much uh, experience in terms of you know mapping and GIS uh, expertise or capabilities, but um, should be able to you know pose certain queries or uh, questions to the system, and the system should be able to spit it back out. Uh, providing regional and sub-regional information and allowing greater detail to come from natural sources. So essentially, what that uh, point means is. Uh, should the CMA encompass more of a regional approach and as we drill down to final levels, whether it be national or sectoral, the CMA is no longer responsible for providing that information. That information is going to tap directly into whether it's at a country level or an institutional level. Uh, another thing the CMA too can possibly provide is uh, the repackaging of uh, certain types of data and products. Uh, specifically catering to what its direct user base wants. So it's no longer just about providing, I'll use the example we spoke about, a series of sea surface temperature maps, but perhaps providing uh, a more informed product as far as, you know, over a period of time, looking at average sea surface temperatures per decade. Uh, taking that information and kind of uh, distilling it down to something that may be a bit more useful to a particular user or users. Um, risk assessment and risk reduction as part of a uh, coastal development was a point that uh, Cesar brought up and uh, it's kind of a, I wouldn't necessarily say a hot topic, but a very key issue within the Caribbean. Uh, coastal development is taking place con constantly and there's always risk associated with it. So. For the CMA to maybe kind of provide a little bit of data and information within that aspect is definitely an opportunity that's uh, presented to us right now. And then last but not least, we have the MBRS2 program and the Healthy Reefs Initiative, 
which are further opportunities that came up during the discussion as far as uh, information being fed uh, into and through the CME to its uh, different users. Uh, and I think that's kind of it. Yep. I was told I can take questions, but I can redirect them to the appropriate person. That is correct. Uh, thank you very much. That was